In this video, I present my sensor readout speed measurements for the Nikon Z6, which I tested for all its video and photo modes. I'll also compare its results to other cameras I've tested. Finally, I'll show how I measure the readout speed, including details of how to perform your own measurements using my open source project on GitHub. Here are all the Z6 III results in a single page. I show the measurements in both fractional speed and millisecond notations. First up are the photo results. The camera reads out the full sensor in just under 1 70th of a second, which is 14.41 milliseconds. This is 3.5 times faster than the previous 14-bit readout speed of the Z6 and Z6 II. Note that Nikon dropped 12-bit support for RAWs in all their XSpeed 7 generation cameras, so there are no 12-bit RAW measurements for the Z6 III. The DX area readout speed for RAWs is 1 105th of a second, which is 9.5 milliseconds. This directly corresponds to the DX crop of the sensor, meaning there are 1.5 times fewer rows to read out, so 1.5 times faster readout speed. The JPEG and HEF readout speed is 1 90th of a second, or 11 milliseconds. Although the camera drops support for 12-bit RAWs, it still uses a 12-bit sensor readout for JPEGs and HIFs. This is because these formats are bit depth limited, so it would be wasteful to read out the full 14 bits from the sensor when only 12 or 10 bits are actually used in the resulting image. Next up are what Nikon calls the high-speed frame capture release modes, which are the C30, C60, and C120 photo frame rates. These are also the modes used for all the camera's new pre-capture support. They're also all JPEG only. You'll note C30 and C60 have the same readout speeds as the full-size JPEGs for the other release modes, as expected. The C120 has a 1137th readout speed, which corresponds to a DX area mode JPEG. Let's move on to video. First we'll look at all the long GOP results, meaning H.264 and H.265. The 6K readout speed for all frame rates is 1 107th of a second, or 9.33 milliseconds. This is the fastest 6K readout of any hybrid camera on the market. This is very impressive. Note that video uses a 12-bit readout, so these speeds correspond to a 12-bit JPEG readout, but with fewer sensor rows due to the video aspect ratio crop. Next are the 4K results. Both 120 and 100P results are 1 163rd of a second, which is 6.1 milliseconds. This mode uses a DX crop, so if you do the math, it represents a 12-bit sensor readout of the sensor adjusted for both the DX crop plus the aspect ratio crop. What's interesting and slightly disappointing that is if you do the math on these speeds, Nikon could have achieved an oversampled 4K 120 and 100 mode with only a 1.1x crop instead of 1.5, matching for instance the Sony A7S Mark III. Not sure why Nikon chose to do this, since a lightly cropped 4K 120p mode is a highly competitive feature that is currently only offered by Sony. The 4K 24p through 60 modes are 1 107th of a second, or 9.33 milliseconds. This is the same as the 6K readout speeds, which makes sense since all the 4K frame rates are oversampled from 6K. Next are the 1080 modes, which all share the same readout of 1 320th of a second, or 2.76 milliseconds. Based on my testing, these modes are either line skipped or pixel binned, thus these fast readouts are the results of subsampling of the sensor and have inferior image quality versus oversampling 4K and downsampling to 1080 yourself in post. Finally for video are the NRAW results. All rates for NRAW 6K and 4K video are around 1 106th of a second, or 9.35 milliseconds, which match the long GOP rates for these same modes. NRAW 4K also matches its corresponding long GOP rate as they both share the same DX crop. Now let's see how the Z6 III compares to other cameras. This is the live results table from my open source rolling shutter measurement project, which is available to everyone on GitHub. I'll provide a link in the video description below. These are all the cameras that have been tested so far, either by myself or by my crowdsourced contributors who followed my project's methodology and submitted their resulting photos for my analysis. In the first column, I list the readout speeds for photo mode, which represents the highest quality mode available with the electronic shutter in each camera, which is typically 14 bits. All the remaining columns are the readout speeds for each of the major video modes. You can sort the results by clicking on any of the column headers. You can alternate between showing the results as fractions of a second or milliseconds. You can also limit which cameras are displayed by entering a regular expression in this field. Lastly, you can select cameras by clicking on their corresponding row. All of these display and selection mechanisms can then be represented as a unique link, which you can share with others by clicking on the Generate Link to Clipboard button and sending the resulting link to others. Let's get to the comparison. First, let's see how the Z6 III compares to all other Nikon cameras in photo mode. Naturally, the Z8 and Z9 lead with their fully stacked sensors. 
What's remarkable is that they're not only four times faster than the Z63's new sensor, but they achieve that faster rate with approximately twice the resolution, so a very fast sensor indeed. Compared to the previous generation 24 megapixel bodies, the Z63 shows a 3.5x speed improvement. This is the first new 24 megapixel full frame sensor to come out in the market for a very long time. If you compare it to all previous 24 megapixel bodies, including not just Nikon but for example Panasonic's S line, you'll see we've been stagnant with the same 24 megapixel sensor design for quite a while. Switching to video results, you'll see the Z63 4K oversampling read speed is about 55% faster than the Z8 and Z9, which is a significant improvement that will result in less noticeable rolling shutter skewing distortion. This is the fastest 4K oversampled readout rate of any hybrid on the market. The closest competitor is the Sony A7S III, which has a slightly faster 4K readout rate, but is not oversampled from a higher megapixel sensor. Let's compare the Z63 to other competing models, specifically the Canon R62. The R62 has a readout rate of 1 68th of a second, approximately identical to the Z63. However, the R62's rate is for a 12-bit readout since the R62 electronic shutter only supports 12-bit operation. The Z63 equivalent 12-bit readout rate is 1 90th of a second, as gleaned from its JPEG readout results. You can play around with this table and see how these other cameras compare. If you click on a specific model, you'll get an even more detailed list of the readout speeds, including the low-level banding measurements from the test images. There's also a table which lists the readout speeds normalized to vertical resolution, so you can compare the per-row readout rates across sensors with different megapixels. Note how the Z8 and Z9 read out a sensor row every 677 nanoseconds, which is remarkable. That'll do it for all the readout results. Now I'll quickly go over how these results are measured. What you're looking at is my rolling shutter GitHub project. There are three parts. The first are the results, which you've already seen. Next is this README, which describes how rolling shutters work and why they produce the skewing and banding that they're known for. There's lots of good information here if you'd like to go deep into the technical details of how sensor readouts work. Lastly is a description of how I perform my actual test. They're performed by blinking an LED on an Arduino board at a known frequency and then measuring the number of resulting bands in the image. Basically the same as those annoying banding effects you see when shooting photos in artificial lighting with an electronic shutter, but useful for our purposes for measuring the sensor readout rate. You can buy this Arduino board on Amazon's US site for about $15. My project includes the source code you can compile and run on these boards to do your own measurements, including instructions on how to do so. 